Hey witches, Tiffany here as always on Bewitching.Bemused. You guys can't see it right now, but I'm wearing my Sanderson sisters shirt because it's coming up on autumn. It's my favorite season and I can't freaking wait. So surprise, surprise, what are we talking about today? It's gonna be a condensed history of Mabon. As always, this is just a very brief summary, so if you want more depth and more information, I have put a ton of links down below to books and articles where you can do further research. And of course, if you're not so much looking for the history, but you're more looking for things to do, how to celebrate, how to decorate, spells to do, correspondences for this Sabbath, I have a completely different video that's all about that, also linked down below, and up here? I think it's up here. It might be up there. I don't know. It's gonna pop up on the screen for you. So Mabon, or the Autumnal Equinox, is the second of three harvest festivals. The first one, of course, was Lunasa. Now we've got Mabon coming, and the third will be Samhain. This is the Autumnal Equinox. It's the start of fall, taking place typically somewhere between September 21st and September 23rd in the Northern Hemisphere. This day, of course, is the celebration of the harvest. It being a harvest festival was probably a dead giveaway of that, but it is also a time of balance as day and night are of about equal length. After this, the nights will be longer than the days. They will continue to grow in length until we reach the longest night of the year on Yule. As I talked about in my Where Did the Wheel of the Year Come From video, the name for the Sabbath, Mabon, was assigned by Aidan Kelly in the 1970s. His choice was inspired by a character from Welsh mythology named Mabon Ap Madrone. I'm probably mispronouncing that. And this was after Kelly started to notice a pattern in different myths from various different cultures where a young person was rescued from death on or around the fall equinox. Mabon ap madrone, Mad madrone, Ma mod. The character's name translates to son of the mother. If you would like to know more about that myth, or if you'd like to hear more about Kelly's reasoning, I did link another article down below in the description box just for that. But that's pretty much where the name Mabon comes from. There is no link to any holidays, pagan, Christian, or cultural. Personally, I just like the sound of the word Mabon, partly because it sounds like a swear. Son of the mother! So I do use it pretty interchangeably with autumnal or fall equinox, but whatever you decide to call this Sabbath is completely up to you. While the name Mabon is relatively new, the celebration of this season is not. Many different cultures celebrated the harvest in September, and the Anglo-Saxons even considered this a holy month. Then we have Harvest Home, which was celebrated in much of the English countryside by the late 1500s. The celebration of Harvest Home took place after a community's major grain harvest, which was typically in August or September. It consisted of a celebratory feast and drinks. Harvest lords and queens were chosen. The village was decorated and there were games of skill related to the harvest. The final sheaf of grain to be taken down was typically given a form and a name. It was sometimes feared and sometimes honored, kind of just depending on the tradition of each particular community. While there's no written record to show that these customs were carried forward from the time of the ancient pagans, they do seem pretty damn pagan in my opinion. And while Harvest Home itself wasn't celebrated until the 1500s, many of its customs are on record as far back as the 1300s. Again, not quite ancient times, but since a lot of records were destroyed and there was a severe lack of long-lasting record keeping, I mean, what are you gonna do? And as always, we can't talk about the history of the Sabbaths without talking about the Christian crossovers. For the autumnal equinox, or Mabon, that crossover was Michaelmas, or Michael's Mass, which took place on September 29th and celebrated the Archangel Michael. Now, Michael is said to have battled Lucifer, and among his various job 
duties. He calls people to judgment and he escorts the faithful to heaven. Many took this as a time to ask for his protection as the night overtook the day and winter drew ever closer. In some places, Michaelmas is still celebrated, but the various ways in which it was celebrated are numerous and very much dependent on time, region, and denomination. And since this is not a video about Michaelmas, I'm not gonna go into it. But as usual, feasting was extremely common. A main dish of goose was traditional in some places, as was the baking of bread. Speaking of, there is quite a bit of crossover between the celebrations, pagan, Christian, and cultural, of Lunasa and Mabon, which makes sense seeing as how they are both harvest festivals. And you'll of course see a lot of these same customs come up during Samhain. Now, as I mentioned, I am only scratching the surface. Once again, there are more links down below to help you keep exploring the history and customs of Maybon as well as the other Sabbaths. But I do hope you took something away from this video and enjoyed it. If you have some more fun information about the history of Maybon to share, or you just wanna talk about what you are doing for it this year, please leave that down in the comments below. Hit that thumbs up if you feel so inclined. It helps me out a lot. And if you're brand new here, as I do tend to get a lot of new viewers with these Sabbath videos, welcome. Please hit that subscribe. I would really like you to stick around and hang out with us. Once again, I'm Tiffany here on Bewitching Dub Amused. I will see you all next week with a brand new video. For now, stay magical.